different offices, if you will, positions. Some people are doctors, some people are lawyers. Same in the ministry. We're called to different, I don't want to say titles, but an attorney has a title. It, it's not about the title as much as it's what we do. And the, uh, the scripture talks about the Ephesians 4, 11, 12. Did anybody bring Bibles? Okay. Ephesians 4 11 says, Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So each one of these individuals are called, or this is a particular move of God through an individual for this task. And I'm going to explain a little bit to you what each office is and go into a little bit more detail. The title apostle comes from the Greek word apostolos, which means a messenger. One sent forth with orders or an ambassador, which refers to one who has delegated authority by another. Now we know where our authority comes from, right? Mm -hmm. The Lord called us himself, and we have put our plea to the ground and totally surrendered our life to him and to be everything that he wants us to be. Jesus chose 12 men to be his disciples and were noted that Jesus called them apostles. He chose them. Therefore, holy brethren, who share in a heavenly call, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. He was faithful to him, the Father, who appointed him. And then John 20, 21, Jesus said to them, the apostles, peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I sent you. So now we become that facet of God, that heavenly call, as an apostle, as a messenger to go forth. That is the apostle. Prophet. Now I love this one. I love this one. Warren and I, and this may be but some people can flow in the prophetic and then there are people who are called to be a prophet. And um, Warren and I are also prophets. And it means spokesperson. Translated as the prophet. In Deuteronomy 18, 18, God said, I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him, which means the mouth of God. So when we we hear from God and he puts his word in us, it comes from up within our spirit, man. And sometimes the spirit of prophecy will come, or the Holy Spirit in that facet of him of prophet to prophesy. It comes out. He puts his, his word in our mouth. We hear him. He said, I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Hallelujah. And that is also a heavenly call. It's a ministry call. Jeremiah 1, 5, 9. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and anointed you as a, my prophet to the nations. Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Which means, again, this is God's doing. He is, this is his way of just a facet. Let me explain that to like a diamond. If you look at a diamond, it has a lot of different cuts on it, a lot of different facets. And I see God that way. He's just so majestic. He's full of light. Diamonds reflect light. You turn it this way, it's a reflection. You turn it this way, it's a reflection. That's the way God is the way his spirit is. It just depends on what he wants to reflect to you or how he wants to move through you that facet, whether it's an apostle, a prophet, or whatever else. The role of the apostles and the prophets is to proclaim the revealed knowledge from God given by the Holy Spirit to the Holy Church that it needs to grow. Ephesians 2, 19-22. You are fellow citizens with the saints, which are the believers of Jesus, and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, 
which means the revelation that God sends through the office of the apostle or the prophet is what builds and edifies the church. Amen? Amen? It was God that revealed these things by his spirit, for his spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. Wow. You want to know how to get to God? His Holy Spirit. I'll read it again. It's in 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 13. But it was God that revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. So we need his spirit, no one. We need his Holy Spirit. That's how we become to know God. And we have received God's spirit so we can know the wonderful things God has really given us. It's all available to you. Everything that you need to know. And the, the answers that we can find, we just have to just realize God's sovereign. Okay, his evangelism. Evangelism, we know. I'm not going to work on that too much. Evangelism, we all know that that's just praying the word. Whether it be a community or a uh, region or across the nation. Pastor, this one I wanted to touch a little on too. The term pastor comes from the Greek word shepherd. We know that Jesus was the good shepherd. A shepherd is one that cares for flocks and herds. A minister of the gospel has charge of a church or congregation whose duty is to watch over the people that God entrusted. A pastor is one who cares for his people in the same way a shepherd cares for his sheep. Just as a shepherd feeds his sheep, the pastor also has the responsibility to teach his people the spiritual food of the word of God. And we, a pastor shepherds his people by taking them. You know, the shepherds have a, a, a long staff with a hook on it. And they reach over there and they grab their sheep and they pull them to it. And they, and they feed them. They help them stay in pack with the other flock so they don't get wandered off or some lion come in you because for the devil wants us to take you out of the body of the church so that the enemy can tear you up. And that's what a pastor does. They bring you back in. Now there's a five-fold ministry. I'm going to end with all this with this. The five-fold ministry is a minister or a group of ministers within a ministry that flow in all five gifts. All five offices. Now, the, the apostle, pastor, prophet, teacher, and evangelist. A five-fold ministry has walked through every one of these offices and learned how to exercise their authority and flow in that comfortably with the Lord. And it's called the five-fold ministry. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is one, that you can be educated on the offices of, of the ministry. But that's who we are. Now you know how we flow in all five offices of the ministry. God has equipped us for the last 10 years, and we have walked through all of these different offices to we're comfortable with each one. He would bring us to another office of the ministry. So we've done all of these things, and we're comfortable in them. Where we're supposed to be planted, where we're at, and we flow in all five of these offices. And that's for the people. God trained us Himself, called us by Himself, and trained us Himself so that we can go to the people with all of these facets of God to bring God to the people in whatever need we get. <laughs>
but there is an assignment on your life, and you know what it is. You know what it is. And there's, there's hungers, there's curiosities, there's desires to serve, there's different areas of the spiritual gifts that somewhere each one of us have, whether it's serving, whether it's giving, whether it's encouraging someone, all of these are gifts that we should be flowing in, whether we're in the ministry or not. They were given to us to serve the Lord, and it's to be served in the house of the Lord. Just for example, service. The word service is actually translated as ministry. Who would have thought? Now, if you're a parent, if you're a pastor, you ever thought about that? If you're a parent, you're a pastor. You may not be called to the office or position of a pastor in a ministry, but your family, you pastor her. God holds you as a spiritual leader of your home. You are a pastor of her. Amen. And with the gifts and the, the, uh, the knowledge and the talents, all of these things that God gave us, um, they are to be used. And I want you to think that God gave us a talent, a gift. And when we get to heaven, he's going to say, what did you bring me from those gifts? What are we going to have to present to him? Matthew 25, 14, that we learned the parable of the talents that God spoke of. And I'm going to give you just the bottom line rather than read all of it. There is a master, and he represents God in the parable. And there are servants who represent us. They were given natural abilities from in this parable. And the Lord returned to them after giving them the parable. I mean, giving them the talent. And he asked, what did you do? For those who took it and said, Lord, I'm going to serve this talent that you gave me to you. How do you want me to serve it? Where do you want me to serve it? Just serve it unto the Lord. When we get to heaven, the only thing that's going to matter is what we get from him. That's it. So the talents that we have, the gifts that we have, are to be given to him, and every one of us have it. And I think that's awesome because God chose to share a part of him inside us before we were even in the world. Their service, exhortation, which is the ability, ability to motivate others. There's giving, which you give your possessions to others. Leading, that you can lead people to where they need to go. Mercy. Got a gift of mercy. You can forgive like that. Word of wisdom, which is an utterance or a message of wisdom supernaturally granted to you. Somebody's asking you something you don't know what to say. There's a spiritual gift, the word of wisdom that God drops in. You're like, oh, what about this? And then you give them that wisdom and they really think of God. How awesome. So, praise the Lord. Now, talking about the offices and the gifts, I have a gift of creativity. If, if y'all want to know that. <laughs> and, um, and leadership. And um, as I was praying and preparing for tonight, um, the Lord had put something on my heart. Hi, Pastor Joseph. How are you? So the Lord put something on my heart, and um, I have uh, some certificates that I need to uh, honor someone with. So, Pastor Shantae.